look at this thing. The Dell G3. Yes, the G-Banger. G3, 15-inch gaming laptop. So you want to upgrade that Windows Home to Windows Pro? Or just get killer prices on Windows Office 2016 and cheap gaming keys? Head on down to 09. Make sure you copy and paste my code from the description to get a price that's going to make you go, Woo! All right, all right. If you're all new around here, come on. Get on the Woo train, subscribe, and you like these videos, make sure you smash that like button. This is Dell's entry into the budget gaming sector, and even though it's budget, this thing has some serious power. As I said in my gaming review, and check out the gaming review if you want to see specifically how this performs in gaming, a link will be in the description. But as I said in that review, this has the power of basically an XPS 15 at a budget price, and that price is $13.99 in Australia, this model here starts at $18.49 in the US. I actually checked Dell's website today, that's pretty good. And £778 they start at. This particular model here is just a touch over 2K Australian and it comes with those powerhouse parts. You know, i7-8750H, 2.2 gigahertz, all core burst of 3.9 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM. This has a 4 gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti. That's a full GTX 1050 Ti, not Max Q. A 256 gigabyte SSD, a one terabyte, two and a half inch hard drive, and it is a 5,400 RPM hard drive, so it is particularly slow. And it comes with a full HD matte IPS display, 56 watt hour battery. Now with these G3s, you can get Optane memory, which sort of like supplements the RAM you have in your system. Do not get the Optane memory one because it's not really RAM. It's not as fast as RAM. It's pretty responsive, but it's just not as good as RAM. And what that also means is your M.2 slot will be used for the Optane memory. You don't want that. You want that as the SSD and you want, you know, the two and a half inch drive for your Steam games, etc. Build quality is friggin' amazing. I love this thing. As soon as I opened it up and I seen it was white, it's Friggin' awesome. You can get Recon Blue as well. This one's Alpine White. And you can also get Black. Now, it is a plastic build. You're not getting any premium aluminium and stuff, but I do love the design of it. I love the blue lights on the back light of the keyboard. I love the checker design on the palm rest. It's white. I'm going to love it. I'm partial to white. I do really like it. It does have the bigger bezels, which sort of these hardcore, thicker gaming laptops. Most of them do have those thicker bezels, but I actually got it pointed out to me the other day. These ones with the bigger bezels, it's easy to replace the screen, whereas the ones with the infinity edge, they're harder to replace the display, and it probably won't be user replaceable, actually. I think you just have to get the whole lid. So it's 22.7 millimeters thick, 0.89 of an inch, and it comes in at 2.53 kilos, 5.57 pounds. So it is basically a portable gaming machine. So when it comes to ports, the G3 being the entry level of the G-Series gaming laptops, you do not get USB-C or Thunderbolt. That's where they make some cost savings here. You do have to make compromises to get a laptop at this price point. Now that being said, I did find it strange that it did have a fingerprint scanner. You wouldn't think they would put that on a budget laptop, but yes, they do have that. You have an SD card slot, two USB 3.1s with PowerShare, one USB 3.1 Gen 2, the power port, HDMI 2.0, you have an Ethernet port and a combination headphone microphone jack. So you got pretty much every port you want other than say display port and Thunderbolt or USB-C. Sort of what I expect at this price point. When it comes to the sound, bottom firing speakers, there's nothing much really to say about them. They're average sort of sounding. They're not particularly great. They're not bad. You can put them up full blast. They don't distort, but um, it's easy to sum up as just bang on average sound. The keyboard is a little bit jarring. It's a full size keyboard. The travel is a little bit short, but overall it's a good keyboard. And because it's full size, it is offset to the left a little bit. The trackpad uses Windows Precision drivers. It actually works very well. The click is a bit creaky. It's just sort of like a creaky noise that may wear in with time but I had no problems using it and yeah I've got really nothing to complain about except the click doesn't feel the greatest and when it comes to display this is one of the main areas where they've done the cost saving it's not particularly bright the viewing angles aren't great the contrast and pop isn't that good it doesn't hamper the gaming experience at all when I look at it straight on it looks perfectly fine for gaming now I measured about 230 nits of brightness and around 68% sRGBs it's not going to be great for doing color work and 
and stuff like that. But for gaming, it's fine. And at this price point, it's what you would expect. Battery life is pretty good for a gaming laptop. You get around four or five hours use. That's just general web surfing, et cetera. The screen brightness of around 50%. 130 watt charger and it's a 56 watt hour battery. Of course, when you game, you're not going to get, you know, your four or five hours and you're going to get, you know, maximum of two if you're lucky. So, you know, the battery life is average. There's nothing outstanding there. Performance is where this thing shines. Of course, it's a fantastic gaming laptop with a GTX 1050 Ti and a six core i7 8750H. This thing has got some power. Does not thermal throttle, does not overheat. It can sustain around 3.5 gigahertz, all core burst. And that's not due to temperature. That's more of power limit throttling. But after I updated the BIOS, I wasn't getting massive dips in frame rates. And if you undervolt, you're not gonna get that much more performance out of it because it is power limited and you'll get, you know, small single figure games if you undervolt. It doesn't overheat anyway, so there's not really much point to undervolting. But if you wanna know more about that, check out my how to stop gaming laptops from throttling. I'll leave a link to that in the description. So the performance is stellar. It performs exactly how you would expect it to. External heat, I didn't really notice anything untoward. You know, 45 degrees on the outer. Noise, one of the better gaming laptops in terms of noise. It's a gaming laptop, it's loud, but it's at the lower end of the spectrum there. So when it comes to upgradability, you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the SSD, and you can upgrade the two and a half inch hard drive. And also if you can get a battery, you'll be able to replace that. So that's great. You can upgrade everything. So my overall conclusions is at this price point, you're gonna get a great gaming experience. Yes, you spend a little bit more, you'll get a better display, you'll get USB-C, you know, go to a G5, G7, whatever. But at this price point, you still get a killer gaming experience with sort of no thermal limitations i can highly recommend this as a budget banger it goes well so i'd like to thank you guys for watching if you're new around here please subscribe and until next time tally ho